the question is, how do you think you manage to succeed, if you know what I mean, or what do you think the key factors are in, uh, in getting yeah, sure. the government? One of the, one of the key enablers of the being a men's health strategy, and we now have this in the UK, was the fact that there was a women that there was a women's health strategy. So, so that once you've got, because most many countries don't have either, right? They just have a health policy or whatever. But the yeah. moment a country goes, actually, there's a, there's a there's a there's a case here for us to do something specific to support the health and well-being of one gender then the, the case for um, having the same approach for the other gender, just, it's, a log, it's the logical conclusion. Um, and so that was, one of the, that was one of the key enablers in, in Australia. But it was now you have other enablers as well. Not only are there you know, compar- comparable countries like Australia and Ireland who had them for many years and continue to have, have them, you also have the development of the, um, the EU World Health Organization uh, men's health policy covering 55 or whatever it is countries. So th- there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of things now in place that weren't in place back in 2010 when Australia got its first um, male health policy. Mm-hmm. So that, that's the first thing. Like now's a really good time to be making the case because the government's made a commitment to a women's health strategy. Yeah. And it doesn't, you know, and it doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be in any way antagonistic. Um, um, you know, something that I, again, I think, you know, Mark will probably concur with is that, is that, you know, whilst from a, whilst from an active, an activist perspective, it's, it's very um, um, tempting to say it's not fair, you know, if the women have got something, why, why am the men bloody got something, whereas actually a much better approach politically is to go, it's fantastic that there's a women's health strategy, and Absolutely. it would be really fantastic. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 yeah. It's in addition, the, the phrase I often use, it's, it, 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 it's, it's in addition to, not in opposition to. Yes. So it doesn't have to in, in any way be, and I think something to guard against as well, because some people might actually think this, is that somehow like the two should work hand in hand. And I, they shouldn't really, because they, they would end up being in conflict with each other if you try and resolve the same issues through a women's health strategy and a men's health strategy. To give one obvious example, you know, if, 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 if someone's making the case that preventing domestic violence is, is, is good for women's health, so therefore should be taken into account the women's health strategy, then instantly you get, therefore, a men's health strategy should be focused on uh, preventing men perpetrating violence. And, 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 and that's the other strength of the Australian um, uh, men's health strategy, is it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't take a sort of um, that gendered perspective. It's focused on men. As a, it takes a population health perspective. It says men are men are men are a, are, are a population who have specific health issues. There's a very strong case that in many areas their health is not as good as women. Yeah. But there's also the case that certain groups of men have much poorer health than other groups of men, which would be the same in 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 in, in the UK. And that uh, broadly speaking, men are, men are less likely to access or benefit from from health programs than than women. So there's a there's a real real good case to have a specific focus on men um and then the one thing now the 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 first australian men's health strategy was was sort of celebrated on paper because it had this very ambitious kind of social determinants approach to health which is, is very important your health is certainly impacted by your social background but in reality most health most health professionals most health departments most health funding can't address that it can only deal with, mostly deal with disease as it presents itself, and then to a lesser extent do some work around prevention. But you know, most most health spending is on is on actually fixing problems. It's not on preventing problems. Um, so then that's that's where we're at right now. So in reality, you've just got to focus on um, looking at what does the health system already do, and how can we actually just make sure that what it already does is done a bit better for men. And that's really the primary, the primary purpose of a men's health strategy is to make the existing system work a bit better and a bit harder for, for, for men. And that's actually, Mike, it's, when you actually get into the world of health, that's not a, it's actually, that's not a radical idea, right? Mm. Because basically in the health world, since the 1980s, they've been talking since um, the, I think it was the Ottawa Charter in Canada, which most health systems are signed up to. There's been a real focus on this idea that you shouldn't um, you shouldn't just build a system and expect um, 
all citizens to fit into the system, the system should respond to different groups of citizens. You know, the system yeah. should respond to different population groups. The, the phrase they often use is instead of, you know, we shouldn't expect we shouldn't expect men to orientate themselves around the health system. We should try and find ways to make the, the health system orientate themselves around men. And it can be really simple stuff like acknowledging the fact that, that men are more likely to work away from home or be working long hours and therefore not able to access healthcare settings between nine and five Monday to Friday. So the very simple act of making um, like uh, health services available in the workplace or, 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 or making surgeries open at the weekend or in evenings has been shown to actually make a difference. And that's where, again, there's a, you shouldn't have to wait 10 years because there is 20 to 30 years of evidence from men's health practitioners globally demonstrating that when you, when you, when you change services slightly, sometimes in really simple ways, like changing the opening hours, um, it massively increases the number of men accessing those services. Yeah, I mean, that's, so, that's, that's brought out by, by the access that men do after retirement. But, um... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, when you look at the figures there, there's barely any difference between men and women. In fact, often old, old, older men are going to the GPs more than older women. So, yeah, mm -hmm. without yeah. a doubt. So that, that's the fundamental thing, really. It, it, it's, it's, not, it's not a big argument. And it's keep, so it's keeping, for me, it's about being pragmatic and keeping the argument simple, making it not men, men versus women, just all about making the health system more gender inclusive. So, yes, working better for women, but also working better for men. Uh, and, and, and actually actively trying to tackle some of those um, very clear health issues that can be shown statistically around whatever it is, you know, whether it's suicide or heart health or diabetes or weight or whatever it is. You, there's so many different, you'll know already, there are so many different measures that you can take which demonstrate there's, there, 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 are, there, there, are, there are areas you could take action in, and improve both men's health in relation to women's health, but also the health of particular groups of men, you know, yeah. unemployed, BME. The other thing is like, smart about the fact that um, you know diversity and inclusivity are a part of the, the modern framework so you also make sure you have a little bit in there about and it's not just you know it's not just white you don't say this but it's not just you know white middle class blokes being better health. it's about all men and boys and that includes BME men and boys and um, men and boys men who are gay and you know traveller communities and every single group Oh, so the the, the 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 gender aspect of that disability, you know, you know, all the all the all the groups that would be covered by the equalities kind of work. Um, yeah. The men, it needs to be definitely.